Hello viewer, welcome to Hope Channel Kenya. Welcome to God is Listening. God is Listening is a testimony program that centers on the fact that God is listening. He's listening to you right now. He knows where you are. He knows what you're thinking. He's omnipotent, all powerful, all knowledgeable, omniscient, and he's everywhere. Where you are, he is, and where I am, he is, and he's listening to us. Um, with me in the studio today is a young man called Daniel Ndegwa. Daniel is a professional auditor, and uh, he's going to tell us his testimony, how God has been listening to him. Before we go on in the program, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we bless your holy name. We acknowledge your goodness, your mercies, and loving kindness. We acknowledge you, O Lord, our God, who created the universe. We acknowledge you, O Lord, our God, who has so loved us that when we sinned, you sent us Jesus Christ to come and die for our sins that we may live to reconcile us to you, O Lord our God. We bless your name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the privilege of testifying of your goodness, O Holy Father. Thank you for this day. As we begin, we pray that your presence be with us. Forgive our sins and our trespasses and speak to us, speak to your people and cause us to hear your voice. Thank you, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Daniel, yes. I know that uh, God speaks to you. True. What has he spoken to you in recent times? What message do you have in your heart to share with us? Thank you very much. And one of the stories that I would like to share is mm. from the book of Genesis. Mm. And it's a story about Joseph. Yes. Uh, I hope m most of us have heard about Joseph. Yes. He was uh, one of the sons. That is from the book of, Jos uh, of, of uh, Genesis. Genesis from chapter 37 to 50. Sure, around yeah. there. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob. Yes. And he was a favorite of his father. Yes. And uh, Joseph at some point, uh, his father gave him a coat of many colors. Cause yes. He was one of the favorite sons. Uh -huh. And he sent him to the other brothers who are looking after the livestock. And Joseph was told to go and look uh, what, their what the brothers are doing. Mm. And uh, when he went, he found that uh, they had gone to a far place. And he went until uh, he found them. Yes. And there's this dream that uh, Joseph had uh, mm. whereby he was going to be uh, to be like above them, including the father, whereby at some point they would bow down to him. Mm -hmm. And when he shared this dream with them, they didn't like it at all. Ah. Yeah, so uh, they actually, initially they wanted to kill him, to do mm -hmm. away with him, mm. but they had uh, some of them uh, convinced the others that mm. they instead of doing that, they should uh, throw him in a pit mm. and uh, just to cut it the story short, mm. he was thrown in a pit, but he ended up in Egypt as Amen. a slave. Mm. Yeah, and in Egypt, um, his life was not that uh, uh, smooth because mm. as a slave, uh, you don't have many rights like the others. And uh, he was uh, he was employed by Potiphar, mm. and there's this time that uh, Potiphar's wife. Uh, wanted to have him, but uh, he refused because for him, he said, how can I sin against God? Amen. Yeah, and we can see his integrity throughout, uh, throughout uh, his life. And he was thrown in jail. And in jail, he found uh, two other prisoners. And there was the baker. And uh, there was the baker. And also there was uh, this other... Butler. Uh, the butler, exactly. <laughs> and... Uh, so uh, they had a dream, and Joseph, again, being a dreamer, he interpreted the dream. 
and the dream in interpreted whose dreams yeah he interpreted the dream uh, of, of the, the two prisoners yeah of the two prisoners uh -huh. and uh, the baker was told that uh, he would be killed after uh, three days but the butler he was told that he would be restored to his position in the palace yeah and mm -hmm. he agreed with the uh, with the butler that once he's restored and he goes back to the king uh, he should remember him but mm. he forgot him mm. and we find uh, from this story we find that there are so many injustices that were done to joseph mm. from the point whereby his brothers betrayed him mm. when he was in egypt uh, potiphar's wife uh, that was uh, a lie that uh, joseph intended to to be with her mm. and also we can see also like uh, the butler forgot mm. him after mm. all this but one of the lessons that I get from this story is mm. that um, Joseph does not become bitter mm. at all mm. throughout mm. this process, mm. that he has a forgiving heart. And at this point, uh, it gets to a point whereby he's elevated to become the second in command Amen. in the kingdom. Mm. And this comes through uh, when uh, at some point the butler uh, told the king, when the king had uh, a dream, that is Pharaoh, uh, that there is someone who can interpret your dream. Mm. And Joseph came and interpreted the dream very well. And the king told him to, uh, be, sec to be the second in command so that he can be able to uh, take care of the famine that was coming. Mm. And it's through this famine that the brothers uh, travel all the way to Egypt. And without knowing, they come across Joseph, mm. the brother. Mm. He recognizes them. But for them, they are not aware that he's the brother. Mm. And again, we find that he's emotional, but he's not bitter. And once he tests them, uh, whether they are they've changed, their characters have changed, he is able to, uh, to favor them, to give them the grains that they needed. And eventually, the whole family is brought back to Egypt, whereby they have food. And even the father comes there. Amen. Uh, yeah, and the take-home lesson that I would like to share is that uh, Joseph, the forgiveness that he had, even mm. the brothers couldn't believe. Because mm. even at some point they were telling him, uh, maybe he wa he's waiting for the father to die so mm. that he can punish them. Mm. But Joseph told them not that's not the case. Mm. Uh, why should he be? like the judge where well, should he be in the place of god mm. and uh, he restores them without any grudges or such and we find that uh, joseph had been transformed in his character amen and that's why even god elevated him because he had he had a forgiving heart and i think for him he understood about the ministry of christ amen because uh, if christ died for us for our sins when we were the ones who had offended him, uh, then why should we also not forgive others the way Christ forgave us? Amen. Yeah, and he had obtained the, uh, the character of Christ. The last lesson from this story is that uh, Joseph, as much as he was in plenty and he gathered a lot of bread mm. and he shared with the brothers, God is also calling us to do the same. Uh, mm. With the truth that we have, with the Bible, we understand most of the things that are written in the Bible. Mm. God is exhorting us to gather all these truths because in the word of God, truth is equated to bread. We Amen. should gather because our brothers are coming. Amen. And when they come, they should, they should find us ready so that we can be able to share with them freely. Amen. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's a very interesting perspective. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dear viewer, yeah, the story of Joseph is found in the book of Genesis from chapter 37. You skip 38, you go to 39, all the way to 50. A very, very interesting story. And Joseph, despite all the challenges that he went through, the Bible tells us at every point, but God was with Joseph. God has a dream in each one of us, God's dream is. And his dream will be fulfilled for us if we remain faithful to him like Joseph was. He was faithful 
And so no one could kill his dream because no one can kill your dream when God is with you. Remain faithful to God. Always be in the presence of God. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for the story of jo Joseph. We thank you for this wonderful story. Father, be glorified. I pray for uh, each one of us, O oh Lord, that the dream that you have put in us, O oh Holy Father, we shall guard it. We shall guard it, O oh Holy Father, by remaining in your presence because you will fulfill your dream for us. You have said you have good plans for us, good thoughts for us, to prosper us and not to harm us. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, um, Daniel, so God's been listening to you. Can you just briefly tell us how you met Christ and how you're here? Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, first of all, how did you meet Christ? Oh, uh, I think just giving uh, some background yes. to how I met Christ. Uh, mm. So We have about 30 minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. So I grew up in uh, uh, I grew up in Mombasa. Yes. Like when I was young, because mm. I come from uh, uh, a family where my dad is was working in the Kenya Navy, so he used to live in Mombasa. Yes. But my mom uh, used to operate uh, a wholesale shop, and she was also a housewife. Yes. So growing up in Mombasa when I was young, most of my friends were. Muslims being at the coast. Yes. Yeah, but at that time, my parents, uh, they were, okay, my father, initially my parents, both of my parents were in the Catholic faith. Mm. And uh, eventually, uh, my dad wasn't uh, going to church as much. He was mm. like a nominal uh, Christian. Mm. But my mom, uh, she continued going to church but she changed and she was in uh, the Protestant churches. So we used to go to Sunday school mm. uh, when we were young with my siblings. Mm. And so I got to be, uh, to understand about uh, the Bible stories mm -hmm. since I was young. Yes. Uh, going to high school, so at some point we relocated to up country mm -hmm. uh, in a place called Alcalao. Yeah. And in up country, still going to church, but I wasn't very, uh, I wasn't, let me say, born again, mm -hmm. but I understood uh, many things about Christianity. Mm. And for me, uh, I would say it hadn't become personal. Mm. Yeah, but I could understand many things. And fast forward in campus, uh, when I went in campus, still going to church, but I was exposed to so much truth, uh, okay, to so much. Uh, doctrines uh, coming from a, a Catholic background. My mm. high school was Catholic. Mm. I understood a lot about uh, the church and also uh, going to the charismatic churches. I understood also about how things operate, but I could ask my f myself a question. Um, like Jesus didn't feel uh, that personal like to me because I hadn't understood the word. Like most of the things in the Bible, I couldn't uh, explain. For they were distant. Yeah, they were a bit distant. Because if I tried to read, like, uh, let's say, the book of Revelation or the book of Daniel, they were actually scary books. Mm -hmm. Because you find there, there are beasts, there are dragons, mm. and they couldn't, mm -hmm. it couldn't make sense to me. Mm. Yeah, so I didn't understand. And it's out of this curiosity that I tried to do a lot of research, like, uh, in the Bible and to ask many questions mm. and uh, one of the questions that I had uh, is how come if uh, we came as Christians if Christianity came from the Jewish uh, community how come the Jewish community who practice uh, Judaism they they keep the Sabbath but Christians how Christians uh, keep Sunday so like it's at this point that I because you read about the Sabbath yeah. in the Bible Exactly, because uh -huh. I read about the Sabbath, but I could wonder how come it's different. Mm, why are Christians uh, keeping a different day? A different day, uh -huh. and I could wonder, are there Christians uh, who keep the Sabbath? 
So I you had not met anyone who keeps the Sabbath. I had met uh, Seventh Day Adventist, mm. but subconsciously, I just thought maybe that's just another religion. We had uh, people. Yeah, we had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't know maybe what they are doing. Mm. So it wasn't. It didn't click. Maybe they have. Uh, maybe they have the truth. Mm. And uh, so what I did, uh, I research a lot uh, on the digital channels. Uh -huh. So we have YouTube, we have Facebook, mm -hmm. we have um, the internet. There's a lot of truth there. Information. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So like for the Sabbath uh, case, I could uh, research, especially on YouTube, mm. uh, about the Sabbath. And I could uh, find uh, initially, especially like from the Jewish community, like there are these rabbis. Yes. And they could say like about the Sabbath, it cannot be changed. Mm. And even the Christians, they changed it. So I became very curious. And so there are this, um, there's this seventh day pastor who is called uh, Doug Butler. Yes. So I started to watch his clips. He has a lot of uh, uh, material. On uh, YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube. Uh -huh. He's a seventh day pastor. Yes. And he has a very good testimony. Yes. He was also... Uh, let me say secular or pagan. He hadn't an atheist. Yeah, an atheist. Mm. But at some point, uh, he found the truth. Amen. Amen. So, mm. one of the things that um, really uh, convicted me is because, uh, like reading from the word, mm. like I could relate. If I read throughout the Bible, mm. this Sabbath commandment, it was kept right from the beginning at creation mm -hmm. all through the bible even during uh, when jesus was around together with his apostles you yeah. found that the sabbath was kept from creation exactly before the jews were exactly uh -huh. yeah so it wasn't it didn't actually belong only to the jews it was for all humanity and all this was your personal research exactly uh -huh. Yeah, and even for Seventh-day Adventists, yes. it doesn't necessarily belong to them. It belongs to all humanity. It does not belong to Seventh-day Adventists. Exactly. It is for humanity. It is for humanity. Amen. Amen. So uh, it's from that, um, uh, like from that research now that I came to find out, even Jesus saying that uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but not any His uh, word. jot mm. or Tito that can pass away from his word. Mm, and from his law. Huh? Exactly. Mm. And even the apostles, uh, the Sabbath wasn't changed. It, it was changed. It was transferred way after the apostles had uh, vacated the scene. Mm. So uh, what I decided uh, from this information, because I All had by yourself. Exactly. And looking at Not yet gone to any Sabbath keeping church yet. Not, uh, not at all. Wow. Yeah. So at this point, uh, I really didn't understand how do you keep this Sabbath because I just thought it's a it's an issue of just resting. Yeah, so uh, I I tried now to try to keep the Sabbath on my own way, but I also prayed to God. You decided to rest. Yeah, to rest like on your own. On my own, and it was a uh, it was a bit of some difficult decisions because mm. uh, like what I used to do on Sabbath, which is Saturdays, mm. previously that's when I could meet my friends, that's when I could, uh, if I had some errands to run, if I had some business to accomplish or even work, because uh, like on Sunday I used to go to church. Mm. So I started uh, keeping it uh, by myself. So I tried that for like uh, two or three Sabbaths, but uh, I couldn't, uh, I, I, I couldn't like, let's say stay in the house. Uh, I used to, st I, I didn't just use to rest, I used to stay in the house and research more, do more research on these Sabbaths. That and you said you prayed. Yeah, and I prayed to mm. God to show me the truth. Amen. Yeah. So uh, there's this time that um, I thought, let, let me, uh, like this Sabbath that was coming and it was on Friday. Mm. And I said, let me just go to town. There's no work that I'm doing. And uh, the day, uh, for the day to end, let me kill some time. Mm. And then uh, at the end <laughs> of the Sabbath, <laughs> the, the next week starts all over mm. again. Mm. So when I came to town, uh, there was, uh, of course, a day is too long. So mm. I said, let me just go to Uhuru Park. Many, I'm sure many of uh, our viewers know about Uhuru To just Park. go for a walk. Yeah, to just go for a walk. And it's when I went to Uhuru Park, um, there was uh, this summer, like a crusade. Mm. 
Mm. From a distance, I could see there was some preaching that was going on. Mm. But I just thought, uh, that's just another church. Uh, I was a bit averse to mm. even going to find mm. out th what, what these people are preaching about. You were searching for the truth and you didn't want any strange thing coming, yeah. <laughs> coming in between. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. so, for, me, for me to change, I need to be convinced and mm. I need to to like it's very hard to just change immediately yes yeah so when i was seated there there was this uh, old uh, elderly man who came and sat next to me and he was a friendly man he had to come to town from up country mm. and he had a need he didn't have like fare back home mm. and it's out of that that he 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 became friendly to me and once i told him that i will assist him he told me, then wha what are we doing here? Let's just go to to that uh, crusade that's happening. Mm -hmm. And then now I found the courage. So I accompanied him. We went there. And lo and behold, it was a, it was a seventh day uh, church that had a crusade there. Mm -hmm. And there were these pamphlets that he, he went and collected them and he came this with them. This old ma stranger. Yeah, yeah, this old stranger. Uh -huh. Totally a stranger. And one of the pamphlets, it was talking about the Sabbath. Wow. And the verses from the Bible, why it can't be changed. How did you feel? Oh, this was like a light bulb moment for wow, me. Wow, wow. Yeah, because now uh, I found like there's a church, even in Kenya, whereby I can go and uh, keep the Sabbath with them. So, so God led you to Uru Park. Exactly. I would say that. On a Sabbath when you're wondering what to do. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I engaged with some of the uh, with some of the members of the church, mm. and I asked them uh, where your church is. They told me it's around Upper Hill. So uh, now I knew that um, uh, I will come to the church, to the Seventh Day Adventist, Adventist Church. But uh, for the next two weeks, I was supposed to travel to Mombasa for the next two weeks. So mm. I travelled, and when I came back, I came and looked for the church. So initially I went to New Life uh, Adventist Church uh -huh. and there again I found out about uh, uh, there was a seminar, prophecy seminar mm. uh, by the preacher, if I'm not wrong, uh, he's called Derek Morris. He's wow. usually on Hope Channel. Uh -huh. Yeah, and he was explaining. He was visiting yeah, he from was the US. Yeah, I uh -huh. think. And he was explaining about the book of Revelation. And wow. Yeah. The book that was so strange for you. So strange to me. Mm. And it was so, like, it was so uh, eye-opening for me because he was going through history. And for me, I read a lot about history, ah. current affairs, so I could relate and I could wonder, these things in the Bible, they have been in the Bible all this time. And yet they're happening uh, in reality. In reality. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, so so I was really even fascinated now even more to learn even much more. So apart from the Sabbath, it led me to learn much more about the Bible, mm. about prophecy, mm -hmm. about um, other truths that are there, but uh, many people don't know them, Amen. Uh, even Christians. Mm. Yes, so... Uh, it's out of this uh, learning. Uh, so I changed my church uh, to a church that is near where I stay. Mm. And I fellowship at Siloam. Amen. A re religious church. And it's at Siloam now where I was baptized because now I was fully convinced. Now I had no, I had no choice. Like that I could this is home. Back. Yeah, this is home. Amen. We'll take mm. a short break, uh, uh, Brother uh, Daniel. Yes. And then we'll come back to your testimony. Okay. Dear viewer, I am fascinated. I hope that you too are enjoying this uh, testimony the way that I am. I will take a, a short break and then we'll come back and listen to Brother Daniel. Please don't go away.
Welcome back, dear viewer. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for watching Hope Channel Kenya. And thank you for watching God is listening. God is listening. And David is telling us just how God has been listening in his life. And he's told us how he was searching for the truth, searching for the truth all by himself, wondering, wondering, how come the Jews keep the Sabbath? Why do the Christians keep Sunday? And uh, he went into the Bible, into the internet, read through history, and uh, he came back with the conclusion that actually the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. It is the same day that the Jews keep. That is Saturday. Uh, yes, uh, Brother Daniel. So uh, you tell us that all by yourself, after studying and searching, you decided to join, join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Sure. Went to New Life. And uh, then, uh, yeah, yeah, you told us about uh, about about your encounter at, at New Life. Yes, and how you heard prophecy being taught. Exactly, and made a decision. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. now you have joined Ceylon. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah. So uh, when I joined Ceylon, mm. okay, even. Because I went to New Life just briefly. Yes. And I thought uh, we usually go to church uh, from just for two hours, like many of the churches uh -huh. go to church. You yeah. thought it would be just two hours. Yeah, just two uh -huh. hours. So I used to go to church at around 10. Mm. And I could find the divine uh, uh, session starting. Mm. And at lunchtime, I'm out. Ah, yeah, right. so I thought now I've kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But it's when I joined Ceylon. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when one of uh, uh, now my friends uh, asked me, how come you come for a short time? And, and disappear. Yeah, and disappear. Mm. So uh, for me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't very easy, first of all, to change. Mm. Because uh, it was a totally different uh, way of doing things. Mm. Because, uh, so for example, I could wonder if this, the church, so many things are strange. The way people dress here, what people eat, <laughs> the health message that they have, and also um, even the way of music, so many things were a bit different. Completely. Completely different. Mm. And it was uh, a shift for me to, to, to change my mind. And what did you feel about it? Okay, initially, uh, I would say that uh, the truth, like the truth kept me going because Amen. it was a bit challenging because like on Sunday, mm. uh, initially when I started keeping the Sabbath, I still used to go to church still on, on Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Uh -huh. But now when I came to find out the truth, now I said, now I want to go to church on Sunday. Mm. And my friends from Sunday who are going to church on Sunday, they could ask me, how come you are not coming to church today? Mm. So like uh, explaining to them, it's very difficult. They could wonder, what is, are you okay? Or <laughs> what has happened uh, What has happened? How can you just change all of a sudden? Mm. Yeah, so it They didn't know that you, you had actually gone on a journey. Yeah, they didn't know initially, but uh, just a, a short while I started now telling them because mm. I had the confidence even to defend some of Amen. the truths from the Bible. Amen. Yeah, initially I felt uh, maybe I'm not uh, very well grounded, mm. but uh, now I started even uh, like uh, enlightening them like to read the Bible. Amen. Yeah, so uh, I think it was a really good experience, especially when I started now going to church for the full day because I could wonder how do you go to church for a full day? For a whole day. A whole what day. do you do in church? Exactly. So like initially when I went uh, in the morning, I could go for the lesson study. There's this quarterly that we do. Mm. And through the lesson study that you are supposed to be learning something every day of the week. Mm. And it culminates on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You learn so much about mm. the Bible. Mm. And then now there was the divine and then the afternoon session whereby you learn much more about the Bible. So at the end of the Sabbath, at the end of every Sabbath, 
I used to feel I'm spiritually fulfilled. Amen. Yeah. And it was, uh, now I didn't even a have new a new experience. It was a new experience. And uh, I didn't have a question, why should I go to church a whole day? Mm. And it was, uh, it was really, really uh, good. And I thank God, all this experience, I believe that uh, it's God who has walked with me, like uh, uh, showing me the truth. Amen. Each step at a time. Heard you. Uh, God had been listening to you. Exactly. Listening to your thirst for, for the truth. Exactly. And so did you finally say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you? Sure, that I did. Mm. And um, I was baptized uh, still at Siloam Church. You gave your life to Jesus. Yes. And was baptized. Exactly. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. How has it been since you were baptized? Oh, I would say the journey has been uh, fantastic in terms of uh, the upside in such a way that uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, uh, even sometimes I wish uh, that I had known these things earlier, but mm. I thank God for his timing. Amen. There's a reason for everything for me to go through different uh, uh, different uh, points of truth. Amen. Yeah, I wouldn't be where I am, and I thank God for everything. Oh, this is so fascinating. Yeah. So fascinating. Yeah. Do you have another point <coughs> in your life where you prayed and you remember that God answered you? Oh, yes. Yes. I have Tell us that. Yeah, I would say I have uh, quite a number of points, especially, let's say. Several testimonies. <laughs> yeah. Tell us one, and let's see if we still have time. We can have another one. Oh, okay. So uh, there's this time that uh, I had just joined, uh, like I had started working. I hadn't uh, worked for long. Mm. And Do you I have a family? Are you married? Uh, right now, not yet, but uh, looking forward to Amen. Yeah. May the Lord give you a good wife who fears the Lord. Amen. A good wife who is thirsty for God like you are. True. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, so you're telling us. <coughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I would say there are some things that have, uh, like even when before like I came into the faith and I was baptized, Mm. I believe God was with me because some things I could pray to God and yes. they would happen strangely. Amen. Yeah. So like I would say one of the uh, the one of the prayer that I had when I when I joined my job and yes. uh I just prayed to God like to give me a, a car. I didn't have a car like uh, and I couldn't see I had worked let's say like for around three years mm. and I didn't have a car. Mm. So I told God, uh, I don't have a car, just give me a car. Amen. <laughs> yeah, like it's a prayer like I insisted. Eh? Amen. Yeah, and then eh, there was this company that had uh, like a promotion. And so like uh, I I went and bought their product. I, I wasn't buying because of the promotion or anything. Mm. I went and bought uh, like an iPad, this iPad, a Samsung iPad. Eh? Mm. And the sales lady told me, You've bought a, a good gadget. You need to fill this form. There is a like a promotion that's going on, like f uh, for for this uh, kind of device, any device that you buy from this company. There's mm. a promotion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like a week later, <laughs> believe it or not, I won a car from that company. What? Yeah, like uh, just like that. What? So I believed that's. Really you just said, Lord, give me a car. Exactly. Yeah, so like... Uh, a very bold, bold prayer. Yeah, that's a very bold prayer. Dear and viewer, <laughs> God is listening. True. God is listening. He just doesn't listen to small prayers. God, he is the creator of the universe. He is the creator of the universe. Everything belongs to him. You know, if you ask him, if you ask him in truth, he will give it to you. He knows your heart. He knows what you're going to do with it. So God gave you a car for free. For free. 
Never just like that. Yeah, just like that. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and some of these things, uh, like when I pray to God, even let's say in my education, and a prayer is answered, I think it increases my faith. Amen. Yeah, because uh, whenever I'm praying, I'm always looking forward to God fulfilling in his own will. Amen. Yes. So it's not just it was not it's not just about praying for this thing or that thing. Yeah. But when you pray, you your your faith is increased. Exactly. You trust in God more. True. And more. And more. And you know what? Yeah. God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. True. And all these other things shall be added yeah. unto yeah. you. Exactly. You are seeking God. True. Seeking him in earnest. You wanted to know the truth. True. He revealed the truth for y to you. True. And he answered your prayer. Exactly. And he's answered your many other prayers. Many other prayers. Amen. Amen. You want to tell us another one? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I would say the biggest one, uh, which I've just said, mm. it's about um, whenever I read, let's say, like, the word of God. The biggest one, I think, is spiritual fulfillment because these other things, like the biggest fulfillment is for us to have hope. Amen. In the life we are living now and even in the eternal life Amen. that is coming afterwards. Amen. To have that assurance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest blessing that I have. Amen. And one of the prayers that I've always had is like when I read the Bible, sometimes you come across something that you don't truly understand. Mm. And Okay, you just pray to God and you keep it at the back of your memory. But with time, you find oh, like clarity. A, a, a clarity mm. like, uh, on some of these truths. And for me, I would think the biggest blessing is to understand the Bible uh, the way I understand it now. Because mm. what I've come to realize is that we cannot exhaust God's truth that mm. is in the Bible. Mm. There's so much truth therein. And Amen. Every day mm. is a learning point. Every time uh, we are learning something. Amen. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest um, prayer that God has fulfilled for me. Amen. Amen. Your biggest prayer answered sure. is that God has revealed himself to you. Exactly. And revealed his truth to you. Exactly. This far. This far. And you're saying you're still looking forward yeah. to more revelation. Much, much more. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, the Lord says, yeah. and ye shall seek me and find me. First of all, it says in, in, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 13, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you that end that you expect. He has good plans for you to give you a future and a hope. And he says, then shall ye go, uh, ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search, search for me, me with, with all, all your heart. heart. Then ye shall s call unto me and I will answer you. Exactly. Yeah, ye exactly. shall pray to me and I will answer you. Exactly. Pray, go praise God, praise the Lord, praise yeah. the Lord. Amen. Yes, thank you so much, Brother Daniel, thank for you. coming to tell us how God has been listening to you. He listened to your heart. He answered your prayers, big and small. Sure. May the Lord continue to reveal himself to you. Thank you. May you continue to know him and to pass on this knowledge to others who do not know that. There is treasure in God's word. Amen. Yeah. Uh, please pray and uh, will you pray for uh, those who have needs? Sure, I will. There's those who are confused, those who are sick. Sure. Those who are bound in chains by the devil. Sure. Those who are looking for something right now. There's some who do not even know where <coughs> their next meal is coming from. There are those who have lost their jobs. True. That those whose businesses have gone down. True. Please pray, brother. Okay. Let us believe and pray. Dear mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come for you this day. We want to thank you for your mercy, for your grace, and for your provision, O oh God, and for your protection. Mm. We want to thank you, Father, for 
in your word you tell us that you have a plan for each and every one of us. Mm. Help us, Father, to always cooperate with you because it is always in our good interest, mm. O oh God. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Father, for the forgiveness of sin. Mm. We pray, Father, for your righteousness, O oh God. Mm. Dear Father, we also want to remember many who are suffering, O oh God. Mm. There are those who, God, who have uh, lost their jobs. There are those who, God, have uh, been infected and mm. affected by various uh, maladies, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Dear Father, in your word you tell us that you are the great physician. May you touch each mm. and every one of them, O oh mm. God. Dear Father, we pray, Father, for the different families. Mm. We pray, Father, that you may show yourself unto them. Yes, Father. Dear Father, we pray that you may provide, uh, you may protect, O oh God. Yes, Father. And above all, Father, we pray, Father, that for your truth that uh, releases people from all darkness, O oh God, yes, Father. may be imparted, O oh Father. Mm. May you help your children to always search for you, O oh God. Mm. And when they do that, O oh Father, may you reveal yourself yes, to Father. each and every mm. individual, O oh God. Mm. We want to thank you. We want to praise you. We want to bless your name, O oh Father. Amen. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, dear viewer. Thank you for us, uh, staying with us. May God bless you. Never, never give up. Never give up. Joseph did not give up. And if you are not sure about the truth, be like the Bereans. Paul talks about the Bereans, that everything that they heard, they went to search for themselves to see whether those things were so. Search the scriptures for yourself. Search the scriptures for yourself. In the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says that, it says, despise not prophesying, but prove all things. How do we prove? Through the word of God. Read the Bible for, for yourself. And may God bless you. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a personal relationship with him. Give him your life and taste and see that the Lord is good. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.